Welcome, I'm Tim Sandal and the topic of this video is Airflow Visualization Studies. So how can we characterize um, turbulent airflow? Well, if I take a pen and uh, take my uh, notebook, this is going to be a very kind of crude diagram because I'm if you just bear with me for one second or I'll draw a HEPA filter, I'll draw a clean room. So we have we have this. Um, I'm going to put uh, extracts in close to uh, relatively close to ground level. So we we'll have the air coming through the HEPA filter in relatively straight lines but then it starts to to mix within the room so we kind of get um, a sort of swirling pattern which is helping to keep the particles in suspension and then we'll be having the air going through the extracts and the way at which this happens is the kind of characteristic of our airflows um oh, sorry our air exchanges per hour Now with um, unidirectional airflow, so uh, another quick sketch. This is, imagine this is a clean air device, and we have a HEPA filter at the top. Um, above that, we'd have a, a powerful fan, and our air would come down in a sweeping direction, fast, yeah, relatively straight line, uh, in this kind of formation, got a crude picture here. But if you can imagine there's a particle floating around, um, then, and we have, let's say, exposed product there, then what we want to do is the particle to get caught into the airstream and directed away from the product. What we want to avoid is anything getting into there. So that's kind of the nature of the first air defense forms part of the unidirectional airflow and we need to be mindful that um, the uh, operator who might be using uh, a glove gauntlet who then breaks that air could be then disrupting it sufficiently to cause a degree of turbulence to send particle landing into there so we need to maintain first air first line of defense um, whenever necessary which is during all aseptic processing activities. So how do we uh, demonstrate that we have the desired airflow, particularly where we're seeking to protect grade A ISO class 5 with our unidirectional airflow? Well, we need to uh, look at design, look at the physical factors, fan, HEPA filter type, design minimising the number of objects and things but then the verification method is with the airflow visualization um, study sometimes it's referred to as a smoke study airflow visualization is a useful method for understanding uh, hazards and the risk that they present in terms of um, contamination particularly within um, open processing uh, where we have a uh, product or product components exposed. Um, so airflow visualization uh, needs to be generated from a device. Uh, it should be performed by uh, people who are understanding what they're looking for. It should be captured by a video using digital capture technology and um, then should be reviewed by uh, contamination control experts alongside engineers, uh, microbiologists and um, owners of a, any particular system. And where airflows are not ideal, then um, either the presentation positioning of objects should be reviewed so we can avoid uh, the slowing down of air and dead air spaces, or we need to um, work on the way that the air is directed within the grade A containment device.
So we're going to have a look at an example. So this is a, a transportation unidirectional airflow device, a, a, a cart if you like, and it's carrying uh, parsley stoppered vials of product. So in these videos, we're going to see um, whether the uh, vials are protected once they're uh, safely inside the device. So we'll be looking at the sweeping action over the vial so we can be sure that we've got that clean air one direction effect. Now let's look at what happens when the doors are opened. So we want to see the air flowing out. We don't want to see any indication of any air from the surrounding room that might be ingressing. So we want a very fast, solid motion of air coming out of our unidirectional airflow device.
And with the airflow velocity component, it's important that we're verifying that we have that uh, desired velocity um, at the working height. Now, working height is something that needs to be defined by the, the user. But let's say we've got an open vial, then you know we tend to be targeting uh, the area just above, certainly within a, a range of about 10 to 20 uh, centimeters uh, within the vicinity of that vial. If we have to uh, change a HEPA filter, change fans, make any kind of adjustment to the environment, then we will need to be repeating the airflow visualization study. We can also use the uh, review of the airflow visualization study to help us determine the most appropriate locations for environmental monitoring samples, particularly the samples of air that we'll be taking, be that um, an active volumetric air sampler or the settle plate. And I've always maintained that there is a role for settle plates under unidirectional airflow, provided we have them in locations that are meaningful. So hopefully um, those illustrations were of interest to you. Um, it's important that you um, set out the approach for airflow visualization studies in your contamination control strategy and that you write the uh, results up in some form of report supported by digital evidence. And periodically revisit these to see if anything has changed and certainly include consideration doing further airflow visualization studies if a change happens through your change control system. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm Tim Sandal and I hope you found this video interesting. If you did then please consider subscribing or check out my other uh, videos related to contamination control, clean rooms, microbiology, pharmaceuticals in general through the channel.